Howdy folks, Luke Simons with you. Back to the basics 101. You know, I had a young man I work with. Um, <clears throat> taught me something today. Sometimes when you're with your kids or a young person, it will bring you back. It'll jog your memory to a time in your own life. And today he kind of did that to me a little bit. Young men, <clears throat> old men harass you, and they harass you for a reason. Pride will get you nowhere. Pride comes at a cost that is such a high cost that it's not worth having pride. And <clears throat> on a construction site, um, I have seen where if you're eating lunch, and it seems like all the older men are picking on you. The reason they're doing that is because they're trying to teach you something that you're not ready to understand. But they're pounding it into you called hackling or harassing, etc. I have done this. I've had it done to me. And I would defend myself. As a young man, I'd defend myself. And it didn't work. Because the people I was defending myself to were so much wiser. They had so much more wisdom, uh, life experience, etc., that I couldn't fight them. I couldn't argue with them. Um, I don't know that. I don't think I was real stupid. Maybe I was. I th in some ways, I was. But certainly naive to some things. So these older men would hackle me, and I didn't care for it at all. But looking back at it, what they were trying to do was help me. I worked in the oil field. <clears throat> it was the same way there. The older men harassed you until really you did one thing happened. If you are a young man and you are struggling with these things and, and, young, and, and older people seem to harass you, know this. They're doing it for your own benefit. Yes, it hurts. I have a nephew, Abe by name. He's a good young man. I'd love to have, I'm going to interview him someday. Young cattleman. Abe's 20 years old. And Abe, ever since he was young, was no fun to tease. Um, because he just look at you. That's what he would do. That's it. Just what I just did. He'd just look at you. And when he would screw something up, he'd go, kind of screwed that up. Well, there was nothing left to say as an older uncle. Nothing. Because he owned it. That's what he did. Then there are other young men that I myself and others hackle them. Don't stop hackling them ever because they can't own their mistakes that's really what it comes down to if you can own your mistakes if you have the maturity to own your your mistakes you will will achieve in your life so much more i i work with a young man who is a fine fine young man and uh, he's 20 years old <clears throat> And I harass him. And I keep harassing him. And the truth is, is he's, he's 10 million times better young man than I ever was at that age. Probably even five years his senior, I, I wasn't that good of a young man. This, is a, this young man was raised right. He was raised right. He loves his mama. He loves his dad. He is a good young man. Um, loves his family, grandparents. I mean, this is a good young man. But I harass him. But the truth is, and I hope he doesn't watch this video, is if he would just look at me and go, yep, you win some, you lose some, and and didn't have any facial expressions or anything like that, I would, I would stop harassing him tomorrow. But when a young man defends himself, or you can see it, 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 it it's messing with him, 
you will see that older men will continue to do this. It is the pecking order. Now, I love Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson will someday go down as a Plato or a Socrates of our, our time period. Plato, um, he is a phenomenal mind. And he did a video some time ago about, I think they called him Lunchbox, I think is what it was. Uh, Jordan Peterson is a college professor. He was working um, on a railroad somewhere, I would assume in Canada. And that's where he's from. And he said that this guy could not take any correction. Now, that's not true about the young man I work with. He can take correction. But this man came to work, and they were all working together. And Jordan Peterson was wise even young. And when they had harassed me, he'd be like, yeah, I screwed it up. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm sorry. And he said he didn't get any hardly any harassing at all because... Not because he was a superstar hand. He just owned everything he did. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yep. He tried to be early on to work, etc. That's not, that's a different video. You know, early to work. Uh, first one there, last one to leave. Don't complain. Do what you're told. Um, you know, if it's morally, ethically right. Um, you know, don't ask questions. If you, I mean, try to think about everything you can as much as you can. Only ask your boss for help if you have exhausted all of your means to do so and you will just be respected you will be respected that's how that works it doesn't matter if you're black pink purple brown red white it does not matter it is human nature that these truths are self-evident kind of rabbit trail <clears throat> but this guy could not take any harassment he came to work with a huge lunchbox, and they called him Lunchbox. He hated being called Lunchbox. They changed his hat to Lunchbox. He hated it. Um, tore it off. Um, pretty soon they were throwing little pebbles at Lunchbox's hard hat. And um, Lunchbox, if I'm getting the story correctly, he hated it. He'd buck them. He'd yell. He'd, and the more they would do that, the more the older men would harass him. Because the truth is, his lunchbox didn't have a future as a laborer or a worker or anything entrepreneur because he had an uncorrectable spirit. And Jordan Peterson, as a young man, was watching this and he thought, I learned something from lunchbox. Own it. Own it. Learn to laugh at yourself. Learn to smile. Learn to be happy. One thing for those of you that, that aren't young anymore, that I did wrong with my children is I, I did several things wrong. Um, one of the things was I, I taught my children to be good winners, but I didn't teach them how to lose. Being a good loser is a, an important thing, and I, it was just a little bit of a rabbit trail here, but if you're good at a game and you lose, be generally, con, um, general, genu, genuinely, yeah, I can't talk today, happy for the person that won. Sure, it's good sportsmanship, and, and, and good sportsmanship is, is, you know, it's kind of become a cliche, cliche. But think about this. If you can be happy for somebody that did better than you, you can rejoice in their victory and be wiser for it because you learn something from them. Just threw that out there for fun, but it, it is very true. You can, um, I, I wish I would have taught my kids how to be better win, uh, losers. And because if you can be a good loser, you can become a great winner. I had a coach uh, they came into my place of business, and they were rated number one in the state, in North Dakota, in, I think it was baseball, yes, baseball. And they played this little no-name school that was ranked, I think, the worst in the state, if I get the story correctly. And that day, he he benched his, his good pitcher, his good hitters, 
And everybody that didn't normally get to play got to play that day. And that little known name school won. And one of the parents and one of his good players came up to him and you made us lose our game, blah, blah, blah. You sat me down and, and he said, listen, he said, look at the other team right now. Look how they're rejoicing. They never got to experience this before. They just beat the number one team. We know we could have whipped them. They wouldn't even score it on us. But look at how their girlfriends are happy, victorious. Look at how the coach, the coach knows full well what I did. He gave that team a shot in the arm. He said, they get to feel like we feel every game. Think about that. It's not about winning. They won. It's about the experience. He said later on, they did very well in the state, but they competed nationally. And they got their butts handed to them pretty heavily. <clears throat> and they came back with a five and a half foot tall trophy and it was called sportsmanship. His team shined out there. He said everyone on that team that year went on to be very successful. It was all for free. That's not in my little notes here. <clears throat> Young men, if you're being harassed, it's because your spirit is not correct. Learn to laugh at yourself. If you feel that you're always the victim, and I'm talking from experience, I was there. I still struggle with this. You take things offensive that should not be offensive. That's pride. Well, I'm talking to myself right now. Pride. Learn to control your pride. It comes at such a heavy cost that you will fight everything. It's pride. If you do something wrong, admit it. Don't lie. If you could do something better, admit it. Say thank you. You're right. Look at them. Look at eye contact. And, and uh, parents, be teaching your children these basic principles. Good handshake, eye contact. Um, you know, with these phones, put your phone down. If someone's older than you talking to you, put your phone down. Make your brain listen to every word that they are saying. And don't take offense to everything. Because somebody criticizes something you did, they're not criticizing your character. They're building your character to be better. Wild horses are wild horses. Wild horses are to be admired. They're beautiful. They can run like the wind. They can go up terrain that a purebred horse probably cannot do. They're half camel, half goat, and half horse, which would make them a little more than half. Because <laughs> that'd be one and a half. Um, <clears throat> sorry about that. <clears throat> Saying this, Wild horses aren't good for much. They aren't. Why? Because they haven't harnessed that energy to do anything constructurally good. So when an older man is trying to teach you something by what you think is harassment, by hurting you, remember, when you're bodybuilding, you're tearing tissue. It hurts. It's not comfortable. No one really likes to pump iron, I don't think. I certainly don't. But when you're doing that, you're building muscle. When an older man corrects you, which oftentimes is in the form of, of harassment or good-natured joking or sometimes serious. If they have to get serious, it's probably because your spirit is wrong. Just saying. Um, one thing is that thing that I really tried to work out with my children was, um, I would my mom kind of nagged a little bit. She was a great lady. Couldn't have asked for a better mother. My mother was is awesome, but kind of went on and on and on. 
And parents, just remember that too. Don't go on and on and on about your kids. They know they screwed up. They're, they're, you know, they're young. They're young people. But children, kids, young men, you know, even ladies, maybe if you're watching, own it. I asked my kids if I went on and on and on. And every one of them told me, yes, they did. And this is what I said. I thought about it for a while. And I said, I'm going to try not to do that anymore. Go on and on and on. I said, in defense to myself, the reason why I do that is, is because I feel like you guys aren't listening. And you're not owning what I said. So from now on, if you wreck something or did something probably not up to, you know, good standard, I would like you to acknowledge it and say, I understand. Just say, I understand. I say, understand, I get it. And I promise you, I won't, I won't go on and on and on. Now, if I feel like I have a pretty good correction gear in my life, for the most part, I'm not, I'm not all knowing, but if you correct me, I feel like you give me some time and I'll, I'll probably come to your way of thinking. Then we can have that discussion too. All of my children can have a discussion with me. You know, it's an open table. You know, I, I have veto power, but I will hear you out. Everyone has a vote. That's just how I ran our house, I guess. <clears throat> not always. I'm not a perfect parent, not a perfect person. But that's what I tried to do. And the reason why people go hackle you is because you're not owning it. You're not owning it. Own your mistakes. The book of Proverbs is a very good book. There's 31 um, Proverbs in Proverbs. Um, and basically, you can read one a day, um, uh, a day for a month and then just start over again. Proverbs is a wonderful book wrote by the wisest counsel in the world um, of ever of all time. And King Solomon, who is the author, said all the time, have a right spirit, correct yourself, correct yourself, be wiser, be wiser, learn, adapt. Pride will stop you from adapting and becoming wiser in your, in your, and you'll get worse as you get older. Have you ever been around somebody that cannot take any correction in their life? Just like wild horses. Just like wild horses. They're a nuisance. They've never been able to harness that energy and, and use it for something constructive. Folks, I love you. I love all of you. Just thought I'd share that with you. Oh, if you're still watching this, check this out. Isn't that cool? I, I collect barbed wire. That is some pretty cool barbed wire. I have some really cool barbed wire. Actually, it's out in my main office here. But check that barbed wire out. Buckhorn, arrow, plate, diamond, and spearhead. 1882, 1868, 1878, 1881. Isn't that cool? Just uh, the old timers. That's probably from what, the 50s, 60s? They used to make things like this and hang them in their offices, etc. Just plywood and stuff. I think I bought that one on eBay. But um, I collect old barbed wire. What the world, I guess. It's cheap. It's an easy hobby. And uh, it's just fun. Barbed wire changed the West. Folks, I love you all. May the Lord guide and keep you. And uh, have a correctable spirit. Have a correctable spirit. Till next time, this is Luke Simons. Happy trails.